Hey, 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 everybody. I am doing this devotional much earlier than I normally do, but uh, if you do log in and you catch this, you'll know why, because I am actually standing in Berlin, Germany tonight. Uh, it's tonight for me, it's today for you guys, pretty early probably still. Uh, well, actually, it's about noontime there, uh, almost noontime. Uh, got the family over there somewhere, but I was thinking of place that would be really cool to do a Wednesday night devotional and this just really worked great with our time plan. I am standing in front of the Brandenburg wall. I think that's what it's called or entryway or gate. Brandenburg, there it is. Brandenburg gate uh, in Berlin. And if you don't know what the Brandenburg gate is, this is when uh, um, Ronald Reagan told Mikhail Gorbachev to tear down that wall. This is where, well, one part of where that wall separating the two Germanys actually was. Today it represents a doorway, in fact, a number of doorways. Uh, and you have to forgive any noises, there's a highway right there, a lot of tourists walking around. But I thought, what better way to teach a message that we have in Ephesians chapter 2? Uh, it goes like this For he himself is our peace who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near, for through him we have both uh, we, through him, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. In the same way, not in the same way, but in a similar way, I'll say it that way. In a similar way that this wall here now represents a, a other wall that got broken down. It's a change. It's something uh, that, that meant restrictions and barriers and imprisonment to some degree. That the terrible thing uh, that was being done at, in a historical time that we've all heard of, some of us lived through. Uh, some of us have seen the experience of later on, depending on how old you are and where you were. But the reality is that wall of separation for between two nations that should have been united at that point, we had a similar wall. It was not a wall of separation that was made of stone though. It was a wall that was made of sin. And we saw that wall starting to get the first bricks and mortar in the Garden of Eden when Adam chose to listen to Eve. And I'm not picking on wise here. Eve chose to listen to the serpent. The reality is once we start listening to worldly things or Satan things or, or evil things and we choose that, the wall kept getting built. And all of a sudden, Adam walking with God in the garden was gone. We've seen it deteriorate, even though Abraham had a chance to speak with God and Moses was up on the mountain talking with God and getting at least see the back of him. And, and we saw this relationship, it just eventually seemed to disappear almost. And then in Ephesians, we see that God wanted that relationship back. He didn't want that wall there anymore. He didn't want anything changing uh, the relationship that he originally wanted to have with mankind. So he sent Jesus sent him there to tear down that wall. He didn't want us to be limited if we could help it. Now, there's still restrictions in scripture. Y'all hear me always talk about the big little words of the Bible. We have to choose a relationship with Christ. We have to obey his commandments to be baptized and to walk obediently through all of our life. But the reality is the door, it's open. Jesus says to anyone that knocks, right? That's the whole point. We now have this access, not just to Christ, but to his Father. We have an access to a heavenly home that for so long was, was so difficult for mankind to find. So when I stand here in Berlin and I look at this, and, and it it's, it's, even helps maybe a little bit the fact that it has that old looking pillar like something in Rome or Greece. But the reality is it's encouraging because... Whereas worldly people look to worldly gates, we look to something so much more powerful. We look forward to the fact that Christ has opened a gate to us. 
he has torn down a wall and instead replaced it with a doorway where he has welcomed us to become part of the family. So this is an encouraging thought for us. So this is a place, to tell you the truth, I never thought I would stand. It's, it's kind of awe-inspiring considering the history. I, I remember Ronald Reagan. I was much younger, but I remember, and I remember what I meant, not just to the two countries involved, but to the entire world, the, the symbolism of a, uh, of a wall of restriction being replaced with a gate of entry. So I wanna encourage you with this. Look at how many people out there are talking about how restrictive Christianity is and, and how you can't do this, you can't do that, or God doesn't allow this, or God doesn't allow that. Let me tell you what God did is God gave us access. He gave us access to him. He gave us access to heaven. He gave us access to his own home. If we would just obey. Seems to me that's a pretty great deal. So I thank you for joining me, even though I'm, I'm, you will not get this live like you normally do. I'm going to add this later on, but I don't want to forget to tell you, keep praying. Don't just pray for me and my family as we're traveling this week, but pray for the number on our prayer list. Pray for Douglas County with how bad COVID is taking over things. Those, the fact that hospitals in all of Oregon are almost at capacity, the, the number of things we have to pray for, don't forget to pray. Uh, nothing like a good middle of the week reminder to, to talk to God and ask him for help, ask him for supervision, ask him for wisdom and love and, and all the things that we truly know are important. Sean loves you. Can't wait to see you all soon. Still got about another week here in case you're wondering, uh, but we will see you soon. Uh, we are heading to Bremen tomorrow. Uh, our plans are a little bit changed uh, simply because they decided that there's a... Um, railway strike going on and there's only supposed to be a few trains open per day now and there's a chance that those aren't running tomorrow when we were supposed to go so we might be getting a rental car and driving a few hours but that's all right uh but we will come home soon and show you guys some great pictures i am happy to announce that germany has taken great precautions against covid too so we've been really safe vienna was wonderful uh, we just had a really good time. So, uh, one more plug here. I put a couple of videos, not a, not a religious thing, just a, a fun night. We had taking a boat ride through Prague, uh, down the river in Prague, uh, at night It's beautiful. So if you haven't watched my video for Prague, I, I just think you'll think it's neat. Uh, so enjoy that. Love you guys. Can't wait to see you guys, uh, show you all the pictures we've had. We've taken a lot. All right. Take care.